Good evening. And tonight is our regularly scheduled reorganization meeting, yeah. December 5th, 2016. The meeting is being videotaped for community cable channels. Individuals attending this meeting and intending to speak to the board should be aware they're being videotaped. Welcome to the meeting of the North Penn School Board. Tonight is the 51st or annual reorganization. Um, we are going to have a Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Diazio tonight. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, we're going to hold our audience of citizens next. Before we do that, there is going to be an agenda item that will be removed. Item number seven, the nomination to the North Monco Technical Career Center Joint Operating Committee. We will postpone that till our action meeting next week, if everyone's okay with that. Yes, sir. All right, it's now time for audience of citizens. Anybody wishing to speak to the board, please step forward, state your name and address. Uh, good evening. My name is William Patchell. I've appeared here many times before, and I'm sure that most of the people on the board are well aware that I have certain topics which I like to bring before the board and to uh, illuminate the public so that they can have an open dialogue and know what's going on and uh, should they desire to come forward and uh, participate in this, this great uh, experiment which it is always an experiment because it is ongoing. Some things are, are working and some things are less so. But I have, a, I have an, uh, an information and I've decided that I do have something that I wish I could say. Uh, it, it be Operation Scar and Tar. Now that really means simply confuse all residents and tax all residents. So how much is our new director of building operations making? What did happen to make you offer the new salary? Was it, maybe somebody would care to answer that? Is that the only question you got? You no, your question? no, this is just, uh, I have three items which I would like to discuss. Uh, my first thing, because Mr. Uh, <clears throat> I forgot the gentleman's name, but um, <clears throat> he did quite an excellent job, and I believe it was making between 100, 100K and 135K, and I was just wondering, Mr. Tassazio, I in a casual conversation, I said, well, what are we paying him? Are we paying what Tom made? Oh, no, we had to pay him more money. I said, more money? Gee, I hope that the Yankees don't have to hire the new guy at uh, A-Rod's salary. You know, that would be pretty tough on the team. So, you know, I like to have performance. I don't care where you've been. Performance is what you do on our team. And I think that starting out, it would be fair to assume that you get a trial period if you're going to give a guy a salary or whatever it is. I'm sure that the resume was, was fantastic and it was on the short list. But maybe you could tell the public how much uh, the salary of the new uh, building, the building operations, but what do you call that position? I'd like to get it correct. I believe it's Director of Facilities. Director of Facilities. Director of Facilities and Operations. Operations. Okay. And what was his salary just before he departed on a yearly basis? Uh, we can look it up. Hold on. Yeah. I do. Would you like me to respond? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, $133,792. It's amazing. You know, I was very close, and I, I didn't really look at it, but... You know, the price is right, you know, I would have won the prize. But anyway, now, the new person that's been hired after extensive, uh, you know, due diligence, how much is the new director of operations making so that the public could be well aware of, you know, what we'll have to pay? Uh, Mr. Uh, Kennedy replaced Mr. Schneider and he was approved at the last board meeting at $147,746. You know what? I hope the public takes notice of that 147,000. That's a pretty large jump for somebody that really hasn't been tried yet. It's kind of like the Phillies hiring a guy. He hit good last year. Oh, and the guy's terrible this year. So I, 
you know, but I'm sure that he has characteristics in his, in his professional resume. And uh, Mr. Tassazio said that he is an architect and he is quite qualified that we could actually separate ourselves from our architectural fees that we could all do this in house. And I expect that to happen. Okay. Uh, he said, uh, I'm, I'm sure that Mr. Snyder was very happy to leave to go to Abington School District. Thank goodness I don't live in Abington School District because I tell you, the taxes in Abington School District, they're pretty, pretty horrific. And you know what? It's amazing. They sell houses there. They are not as prudent as we are. So, you know, I'm sure that they have lots and lots of money to pay. Pay Tom a nice raise, even though the poor put upon taxpayers there. Oh, boy, this is really sick. You know, but, you know, it'll be like the meetings in Abington, like here we got four people. Okay, so I'm glad that I don't live in Abington. Some of our security force with overtime and a little extra money for coaching uh, sure looks good when you're retired at 55, living in Florida, and looking for those trophy fish. Boy, that is great. I'm sure the taxpayers are not retiring at 55. This is what happens when you have a dysfunctional labor, labor contract. And I'm telling you, there's many, many people at, I think they call them military occupational specialties. Well, everybody at the same occupational specialty, if it's the Air Force, the Coast Guard, the Army, or whatever, they're all making the same money. It isn't this dysfunctional thing, gee, how do you pick those numbers out? Oh yeah, I just get them off the top of my head to attract good people. I don't think that's really what, it's, 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 a, it's a bad precedent when the school district or a governmental body, and this is what this last, last election was all about, the public is getting sick and tired of the government taking the lead on salaries and, uh, and uh, gee, uh, private enterprise? Gee, I'm gonna have to move out of the country. Oh no, I can't move out now because the guy said he's gonna tax me to death. So there is no uh, resolution to that problem, but I'm waiting to see how it happens on January 20th. And we'll all be happy when we see what the real program's gonna be. Then we have the school bus accident in Texas. I. I talked to the assistant for Dr. Dietrich this morning because I was quite concerned. Oh, here's a woman. Oh, yeah. They were coming home from the finals. And this is, uh, this is in uh, I-R-A-A-N, Texas. And I don't know if she was qualified to drive a shorty bus or not. The accident happened at 12 o'clock midnight. Boy, well, she got killed. And there were some two serious injuries. So, you know... How did that happen? My feeling is uh, a teacher driving the cheerleaders from a playoff game at midnight, and I, the question I asked was, was she even qualified to drive a bus, or did she just jump in there and say, boy, I bet they'll have litigation that you can't stop. I'm sure that solicitor's gonna have plenty of work to do when, that, when those parents of those injured children start saying, who, what, how much, how big would you like to check? And that's the way it's going to work. Just like you said, oh, the subject of litigation during the meeting, blah, blah, blah. I've heard that a ton of times before. You're not the, okay. With things coming up, and I have, uh, I have, the, I have the paper here, and we were talking about, and I know these parents are very concerned about the, uh, about the uh, air conditioning. Wow, look at this. Public debating tax increases. I'm so glad I get the reporter. I buy it just because of the coverage for the school district. I'm really, yes, yes, I, I said I am so happy. I got 13 weeks. I'm going to see how it plays out. Now, I want you to listen to this. Uh, Montgomery County Community College, $4 million over, over, and uh, uh, $66 annual integrated property taxes. Montgomery County property, $169,000. I'm sure many people have houses that are more than that. With the current average tax bill is $584. Okay, now we're going to do the $3.2 million for the air conditioning. Okay, and I got a few more things. And then I heard a thing on a public radio tonight about, oh, friendly turf or something. Oh, yeah, the UV rays. Yeah, it eats that astro turf right up. And, uh, you know, they only last eight years. You know, they, they, the company never really told anybody the stuff is falling apart. And they have lots and lots and lots of school districts, well, what do we do? 
oh, I, I, don't, I can't believe that happened. It wouldn't have made NPR if somebody didn't think something was fishy. Okay? <clears throat> Uh, going back to the bus accident, I'm really sorry that, uh, that, 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 that whatever happens to, to, on the, or the accident, it doesn't end this matter. I keep telling you about potential litigation. It, 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 it's going to happen. I hate to stand up and say, gee, I told you about that. Why are we going to these things? Who drove the bus over there to the, to the thing on Saturday, even though we lost? It was a great game. But you know what? My feeling is, and I told Dr. Dietrich, we're not taking anybody past this district. And if you want to get there, you're on a team, tell your mom and dad and give little Billy a ride because we're not going to do it anymore. You got how many players? 120? I'm sure mom and dad would be love to get to that game. And you know what? They'll be there, I guarantee. And if little Billy doesn't make it, he should have got the number of a few friends and they'd give him a ride. We're not going to go and get litigated for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Because I'll tell you about the litigation in law schools. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And the final thing I want to bring your attention, lastly, the stilly. Silly step wage nonsense. It's ridiculous. 15 steps. There's going to be cost if eight or 800 or 1,000 kids use their new federal vouchers to jump ship. What are we going to do? Man, they all left. I don't know how. And I guarantee you, the new Secretary of Education, she loves vouchers. I guarantee you, she loves vouchers. Okay? And if you go to uh, a lot of people, not the AP students, because they're doing fantastic, it's the bottom group that they have to worry about. And uh, if you go to schooldigger.com, which I go to occasionally, it says we are in the lower 50% in the Commonwealth for the, for the district. Not the top, not the five, six, and the APs. We're at the bottom, schooldigger.com. Check it out, okay? For every 30 National Merit Scholarship winners you had, you got a hundred at the lower end, and you know where they're going to go? They're going to go up to Soderton to that charter school, rated number one by SchoolDigger.com. How did that happen? I don't know. Thank you very much. With our tax dollars, he has not like an have it with our tax dollars. Thank you, Mr. Petchel. Thank you. That was quite a diatribe. <laughs> you should be aware that, uh, as you talked about, uh, Mr. Kennedy coming here and the previous two people that we have both had both left this district for making more than $35,000 more than they were paid. I, I, don't I know you may be offended by such things like that because you oh, yeah. were in a workforce in a different time in a different place, but these people demand quite a few dollars because they run oh, yeah. 4 million square feet of buildings. I have no compassion for anybody. The taxpayers don't have any compassion. And why do you think Mr. Trump won? Because they're sick and tired of it. Sick and tired of it. Well, thank you, Bill, for your input. All right, uh, let's move forward with our agenda. Roll call first. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell? Here. Mrs. Bukowski? Here. Mr. Schilling? Here. Mr. Kerr? Here. Mrs. Leonard? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Present. Mr. Diazio? Here. Mrs. Charnock? Here. Mr. Shapensky? Present. Nine present. Thank you. I'll take, I'll open the floor for nominations for pro temp president as of section 402 of the public school code as amended. Nominate Mr. Schilling. <laughs> Any other nominations? I was going to nominate Frank. Oh, he can't hear. He can't hear. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the best trouble. He can't hear all the time. Move to close nomination. All right, move to close nominations. All those in favor of closing nominations, say aye. Aye. <coughs> all those in favor of Mr. Schilling serving? Aye. Say aye. aye. Yeah, here you want the gavel for a minute? Sure. All right. Election of president. Microphone. Turn your microphone Thank you. Um, Election for president for one year term. Um, I'd like to open it up the nominations. Here. Okay, I got it. I, I don't, Ms. Bishop, I don't have to have a, a vote no, of the no nominations, do I? You said I have somebody no, who needs a nomination. What's that? You simply accept nominations. Okay. It's not a motion, it does not need All right. a second. All right, so, yes. What's your nomination, ma'am? I'm going to nominate Susan for president. Okay. And I want to just give a, just a little bit. Um, She's been on the she's been on the board for six years, and I just I just feel like that we've had very good leadership here. The 
the health of the school district is obvious that we've had the leadership in this district on both sides, both administrative and the board. But I just think sometimes it's time to have variety. And I just in my entire life I've always felt that variety is important in, in making decisions. So um, I know that she's been very loyal for the last six years. She has a lot of experience also in family law um, as well as, as um, in the seat, the ECP. So I put her name in for nomination. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else? Nominate Mr. Schapinski. Okay. Anyone else? Move to close nomination. Move to close nomination. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, so uh, roll call. Do we, do we get to make a comment or? No. No? no. Okay. Okay, this is roll call for the two nominations that are before you for President, Mrs. Leonard, and Mr. Shapinsky. Okay, we'll start with Mr. Diazio. Mr. Shapinsky. Mr. Schilling. Mr. Shapinsky. Mrs. Charnock. Mr. Shapinsky. Mrs. Leonard. Mrs. Leonard. Mrs. Murphy. Mrs. Leonard. Mrs. Perkowski. Mr. Scherpinski. Mr. Kerr. <clears throat> Mr. Scherpinski. Mr. O'Donnell. Mr. Scherpinski. Mr. Scherpinski. Mr. Scherpinski. <laughs> Mr. Scherpinski, seven votes. Mrs. Leonard, two votes. Thank you. Um, I'll assume the presidency again for one term, and I'd like to open the floor for the election of a vice president for a one-year term under Section 404 of the Public School Code as amended. Do we have any nominations? Yeah, I don't nominate Josie Charnock. Mr. Charnock is placed in the, in the nomination. Any other nominations tonight? Move to close nominations. Move to close nominations. Second. Second it. All those in favor of closing nominations, say aye. 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 Closed. Let's go through, you win by default, but we'll do a roll call anyway. <laughs> roll call, please. Okay, this roll call is for Vice President. There's one candidate, Mrs. Charnock. So we'll start with Mr. Schilling. Mrs. Charnock. Mrs. Charnock. Mrs. Charnock. Mrs. Leonard. Mrs. Charnock. Mrs. Murphy. Mrs. Charnock. Mr. Diazio. Mrs. Charnock. Mr. Kerr. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Charnock. Mr. O'Donnell? Mr. Charnock. Mrs. Bukowski? Mrs. Charnock. Mr. Shapinsky? Joseph E. Charnock. Mrs. Charnock has nine votes and there is no opposition. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, item on our agenda is the recommended approval of the 2017 schedule of meetings per BA 2 <coughs> A through B. So moved. Motion by Mr. Schilling, second by Mrs. Charnock. Comments or questions? Yes. yes. Um, Mr. O'Donnell first, if you want. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Somebody else. Um, not knowing the makeup of the committee, there may be a change either in time or moving it up uh, instead of behind support, uh, support services. It may be moved up to the Monday before. Um, that's in question right now. I think it really depends on once the committee assignments are put out. That's all. So I'd like to say the Finance Committee at the moment would be uh, on hold until the committee meets for the first time, who's ever on that committee. When they meet for the first time, then they can vote, and then we could advertise accordingly. So you're making a motion to amend the approval of the schedule of meetings, BA 2-A through B, am I right? Is that what you just did? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, we need a second. Does anybody else want to do that? I have a question. Go ahead. Can't they just, when they meet, can't they go back and change it? Yeah, it can be changed at, at the World Events Committee as long as they come back here and we advertise it. Would that be a better idea doing it that way? That way, if it remained the same, they wouldn't have to come back to the board. I'm just, I'm not disagreeing with Frank. I mean, I think the committees have a right to change their schedule yeah. because they don't interfere with any other commitments board members have as far as the vote back right. or the IU or whatever other commitments. <laughs> But then that means we just approve it as is. Yeah, first what meeting you is what you just said. First meeting, and you figure out if you want to change it. Okay, that's the way it's always worked. You understand, Frank? 
Oh, because there's somebody can't hear. Are you oversaying? Can you hear all right? I'm fine. Okay. Do you want to withdraw that motion? Frank, let the motion pass the waiver, Frank. I mean, I have no problem doing what Frank wants. I'm just saying that's. You know, it's six to one, half a dozen of the other. I just try to do something right. Okay, I'll second his motion. I'll second his motion. I'll second his motion. Wait a minute, let's make sure. I'll second Frank's motion. I didn't mean to upset him. I'll second his motion. I withdraw the motion. So we have. Hold on, guys. Let me make sure I understand what you're trying to do. Frank has requested that the recommended approval of the 2017 schedule of meetings per item BA 2 A through B. One item on that schedule will be the removal of the Finance Committee. That's what he's asking. The removal of it? Yeah, the Finance Committee schedule. Because it's he, Frank, wants to wait until the that. committee gets together until they're appointed. But, well, but then they have to advertise the public meeting to have to change in the meetings. Am I right, Mr. Solicitor? Correct. I mean, the, the, the real purpose of, the of, this, of this to change motion and adoption to my mind was always for advertising purposes. Right, I understand. Because one advertisement can then go out uh, in accordance with law, giving public notice of all of your meetings. That, 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 that never prevents either the board or the committee from changing those. And that's what I was but when there's a change, there, so. there needs to be an additional advertisement. It happens all the time. Right. An ad needs to be at least 24 hours before that meeting. But things change, but this enables um, uh, the administration to get that ad out that now covers us for all these meetings and additional advertisements don't need to run as a result each for each one of these meetings. That's what this accomplishes. So that was changes right. can always be made. Frank, right. right. yeah. and I just didn't want to, I was afraid that the first meeting you might have a problem, yeah. that's all. I, I mean, have, I have no have problem. A motion on you the want it, I'll, I'll, I'll second it. We have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor of removing the finance committee from the approval of schedules of meetings, say aye. Time. Time. Don't we need to go around for questions? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Before the motion was made? Uh, no, not before the motion. Just before the floor and discussion follows. Okay, so, so when you Mr. first Kirk mentioned it, did you say any questions and go to him first? Yes, I did. I apologize. You're right. I, okay, so what's wrong? What, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. I didn't follow through. I for should have just went back to you and said, go ahead, you want to ask Frank a question about what he was trying to make a motion to? Or not about something? Frank, but I wasn't ready for the motion either. Well, man, not was I, but go ahead. Why don't you offer your opinion on the approval of the It's It's the committee, the way we do the committees. Right. Is it is it ever better, I think it might be better, to meet a committee of a whole? As, as compared to what? As compared to what we do now. Well, the, the committee of the whole, the full board, has to approve all the committee assignments. Well, Is that what you mean? No, the discussion on, on in order for me to be up to date on everything, I've got to go to that meeting and that meeting and that meeting and then back to that meeting. Yeah. Just do it one night. Well, you wait a minute. It, yeah. You have access to all the information from each committee. If you want to find out what board members are thinking, yeah, you would have to either call them or attend the meeting to find out what they're thinking. And find out what goes on at the meeting. I mean, and you can't. You have an agenda. You have all the you documentation always, that a board member has. You don't always get the tenor of the meeting from reading the minutes of a meeting. And I agree that the committee system. You have full access to every information. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as attending the meeting. Of course, yeah, you have still full got, access. You still got to go to the I, I understand Terry's point. And I, I got to tell you, I can envision it since the, I was the guy who invented the committee structure when I came here in 1997. I can tell you exactly what was done. We had committee meetings of the full board right. lasting until 1 and 2 yeah, o'clock in the morning. Right. Right. The Absolutely. public would leave at 9 or 10, and then we would still be here three or four more hours longer. That's true. I and and, 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 and yeah, you were around back then for some of those fabulous meetings. Right. And, and if I remember right, that and was the impetus for the change. When I came on, I suggested doing a committee structure and having people who had a specialized knowledge or interest in a particular subject work at the committee level. But I also said, all information from each committee must be shared with the full, full board right. and each member, and that's the way we set it up, and that's okay. the way it's done. And, but I, I agree with you on the point that if I want to know what Frank is thinking, or Johnny is thinking, or Susan is, or Carol, I have to come to the meeting and listen to what you guys have to say about a particular topic, because I don't get that unless I go to the meeting. But I don't really think that's relevant. I mean, I have all the information that they have, too. And what's nice about it is people come to the committee meetings, you know, who do come, 
don't have to worry. The old system, as you well know, you were under that system. You have to used to go to 10, 11 o'clock at night, people would leave. They would have no interest. Or worse, they'd stay until 1 30 in the morning to hear their subject come up. So, that was not a bad social. Yeah, Terry, Terry I, I agree with what Ben says. Um, I, I read the agenda, I read the minutes. For example, oh, I'm more suited, I'm an accountant, I'm more suited towards finance. Okay. I read his agenda. When I see if it's nothing but change orders, I may skip the meeting. Uh, change order is a change order. ECP is new books, new courses. Not much changes, the scores. You know, it, it's pretty much the same. So for me to have to sit for four hours or five hours just wouldn't make, for, for me, that wouldn't make. But it, but it wouldn't be that long if, if we did right. the system a little differently and, and had had an agenda for, if, if we meet, we all meet three nights a month at least, right? Or four, maybe five, depending on our meetings. And so, if we had three board meetings and one was designated as a work session meeting and one was designated as ECP and finance and the other one was designated for support services, we could do it in three meetings and... We and already have that. Yeah. What, what, what is I, the problem? That's exactly what we I, have already. Now I, the question is, the somebody point, trying to come why do we want to change this? But we're just going to have, everybody's going to now, I mean, we're volunteers, so what, we're going to come, everyone's expected to come to all these different committee, committee meetings. I mean, I've been doing this for 15 years. I don't, I don't have a problem with the way the committee structure works. I don't know why all of a sudden. I'm not sure what's broken. Broken. What's broken? I don't. I don't know. Vote. Okay. Vote. What? I asked a question. Yeah, and you and open that. That box up. <laughs> I, I mean, I can only tell you from history what I experienced. I know when I was a, a person in the audience and I had to stay till one o'clock in the morning, right. and then the board would break for an executive session. That's in right. The at one thirty in the morning, it's true. Sitting in the room know, for an hour true. before they come back. I mean, that was you ridiculous. My memory. Yeah, I know. Okay. I mean, that was but that's crazy. not even. That, I mean, the point in my, I guess, the question I have is, is why? Why are we changing? Look, well, the it's committee not structure gave us the ability to specialize, specialized knowledge, specialized interest, to hone in with specialized administrators who have expertise in the areas that each one of these committees cover, and we get a, a, a much broader, you know, experience out of that. I mean, we get a better product all the time, and okay. they still all those items still have to come. I withdraw my board. question. Oh well, no, I'm just trying to explain what you asked about. I thought it was a good question. Yeah. Uh, so, so, all right. So, we still have a motion with the removal of the finance committee, but the finance committee cannot meet, Frank, unless they have an advertising. Things like getting the first right. Listen to this. We have to have at least one. I'm trying to. The finance committee cannot meet until they advertise a meeting. Vince, with all due respect, there's a motion and a second. Let's just vote on it. All right. Fair enough. All those in favor of removing finance from the schedule of meetings, say aye. 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 All those in opposed, say no. 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 Roll call. Yeah. So the motion and second was to remove finance from the list schedule of, of meetings. Of scheduled meetings. Okay, so you, if you vote yes, you are concurring with removing. Oh, would you please stop? We're conducting a meeting. Roll call, please, over the motion. Okay, so again, an affirmative vote indicates removal of finance from Correct. committee meetings. Okay, Correct. Mrs. Charnock. Can I just make a comment? Because this kind of came up because I had asked about it. Because um, it was right after the support services meeting and it was delayed. But I still feel like we should have that first meeting, so I'm going to vote no. I'm sorry, you're voting? No. Just to have that, at least that first meeting, and then we can. Okay. All right, then I know you're in the roll call. I don't know. Just yes, 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 no. yes, 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 no. yes, 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 I go back to my original motion. Recommend approval of the 2017 schedule of meetings per item BA 2-A through B. So moved. Motion by Mr. Perkowski, second by Mr. Diazio was a second to that. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion.
motion is approved. Yeah. Number eight on our agenda is recommend authorization for the administration to work with the architectural firm of Bonnet Associates for the design, specification, development, and advertising for the bid for the air conditioning installation unit, unit ventilator option at Oak Park Elementary, Knapp Elementary, and Glenmore Elementary. Funding for the project shall come from the Capital Reserve Fund per item 105-16. So moved. Motion by Mr. O'Donnell. Second. Second by Mr. Diazio. Any discussion? I, yeah, I just want to make a comment. So when we say funding for the project will come out of the capital reserves, that's a one-time cash amount, correct? It's not going to be funded through a bond or anything that's right. of that nature. Okay. It may not be one bond, <clears throat> but it'll come off out of a different fund and not the uh, bond funds. Because I understand we have other money coming back from 300,000 over four years. I mean, there's something I don't know. Yeah, I think it's like a one The trash point was we're going to pay cash for the air conditioning. It'll pay cash for the tax back for the residents of North Penn. Yeah. Okay, any other comments to this issue? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So approved. Motion to adjourn this so long meeting? So